Example 5.3-1. Find functions for internal shear and internal moment in the beam in terms of x using integration. Here's our beam. It's a cantilever beam with a fixed support at A and free at end B. The beam is 3 meters long. There is a triangular distributed load applied with a maximum of 6 kilonewtons per meter at point B. There is an x-axis with the origin at point A. The first thing I'm going to do is find the support reactions AY and MA. To find AY, I will sum forces in the y direction equal to zero. I get that AY is equal to nine kilonewtons in the direction shown. Next, I will sum moments at point A. Doing so gives me that the moment reaction MA is equal to 18 kilonewton meters, also in the direction shown. The next thing I need to do is find a function that adequately describes my distributed load. Since the load is linear, I will use a linear equation with a slope magnitude of rise over run, the rise being 6, the run being 3, so 6 over 3. Also, since the load is pointing down, I will show the slope as being negative. My y-intercept is 0. Here is my function. It simplifies to negative 2 times x. Before I go on, I think it's wise to check and make sure that this function is correct. I can check by evaluating this function at two points, at x equals 0 at point A and at x equals 3 at point B. When I evaluate the expression at x equals 0, I get 0 for my distributed load value, which is correct. When I evaluate it at x equals 3, I get a value of negative 6, which is also correct for point B. Now I will find my internal shear function in terms of x by integrating the distributed load function that we just found. I plug in for my distributed load negative 2x and evaluate it. I get negative x squared plus c. Don't forget the constant of integration. Now I need to find out what this constant is. To find this constant, I'm going to use the boundary conditions for the shear diagram. Here is what the shear diagram roughly looks like. I know that at the support, when x equals 0, my shear is going to be a positive 9 kilonewtons because that reaction bumps me up to 9. At the far end of the beam, uh, when x equals 3 meters, the shear must go to 0. I must have no shear when I get to point B. I'm going to use the first boundary condition. When x is equal to 0, the shear is equal to 9 kilonewtons. And I'll plug in values of x equal to 0 and set it equal the expression equal to 9. And the only unknown is my constant, and I solve for it, it's 9. Now I have my shear function in terms of x. The units are going to be kilonewtons, because those are the force units in this problem. Now I can do a check. I have one more boundary condition that I didn't use, I can use that to check my solution. I will plug in for x 3 meters and evaluate the expression and it gives me 0, which is what I expect for my shear function out at 3 meters. Now I will find the function for the internal moment in terms of x by integrating the shear function, which we just found. By integrating the shear function, we get this expression shown. Notice I've also included the integration constant. Now I will solve for that constant by using the boundary conditions for the moment function. Here is a rough approximation of what the moment diagram looks like for this beam. I know out at NB, the cantilever at free end, the moment must go to zero. At the support reaction at A, the moment diagram should be equal to the moment reaction, 18 kilonewton meters. Notice it's negative 18 kilonewton meters. Remember the rule that when you have a counterclockwise concentrated moment on a beam, it causes the moment diagram to jump down. That's why it's negative 18, not positive 18. So I will use this boundary condition. When x is equal to 0, the internal moment is negative 18 kilonewton meters. I will plug in values for x of 0 into my moment equation and set it equal to negative 18. And now the only unknown is my constant of integration, which I can solve for, and it is negative 18. Now I have an expression for the 
internal moment in the beam as a function of x. And the unit is going to be kilonewton meters. I can check it because I have one more boundary condition that I didn't use. I can evaluate this function at x equals 3 meters and when I do it gives me a value of 0 which is exactly what I expect. And now I have my shear and moment functions. And we're done.